Lissa Productions. In lab four, we're going to be measuring the voltage response of various filters. We have here an RC filter, and the way I'm measuring it, we're measuring it in the so-called low-pass configuration. We have an input voltage as a function of time, and we're going to vary the frequency omega from some very low value to as large as we can go on our function generator. And then we're going to measure the output voltage. We expect the same frequency. We'll measure the time response, but the amplitudes of these two will be different. Frequency response means two measurements. We need the gain, which is V out over V in, and the phase difference, which is the phase difference between the output and the input voltage. We plot this on a so-called Bode plot, which is the log of the gain versus the log of the frequency. We plot the phase difference versus the log of the frequency. This is the low-pass configuration. We also want to measure this in the high-pass configuration, which has us reversing the resistor and capacitor here. So we put the resistor down here. We measure the voltage across the resistor, put the capacitor here, measure the frequency response in this high-pass configuration. We're then going to put a, an inductor in here, so we'll create an RLC circuit. And we'll do that by replacing the resistor with an inductor because an inductor has also internal resistance. We'll measure the output across the capacitor for the RLC circuit. In that one, you need to be careful. When you're making measurements, you want to map out what you're measuring, and when you get close to the so-called resonance frequency of this LC circuit, you want to take more measurements to map it out accurately. The last part of this lab, we're going to build a so-called bandpass filter, where we use the high-pass filter as the first part of this, and we add a low-pass filter with some R2 and C2 on the output, and then we'll measure the output voltage after this last filter. So this one lets high frequency through, this one lets low frequency through, and let's do a bandpass filter. So let's go over to the lab now and look at these. So we're going to be measuring the frequency response of various filters in this lab. So here we have here an RC high pass or low pass filter, depending on how we measure it. Our function generator, which we will connect in and put into this circuit here. So the critical thing to remember is when we have these grounds, all these blacks, when we hook this here, the scope probe grounds have to be hooked to the same point. So that is coming around and going up here. So we're going to want to make sure that the scope probes are all grounded to this point. We'll want to use channel one to measure the larger voltages just because of triggering issues. It's easy, the default trigger is to come there, so here's channel one. We'll measure across the whole circuit. And channel two will then measure across whatever component is up here. We can use the auto set. Remember for low frequencies, that may not work. You may have to adjust things by hand. The measurement functions on the scope, the cursor functions that we'll use, a lot of the stuff that we did here. Make sure the scope is DC coupled. Make sure there's no offset voltage on this. And it's reasonable to start at a mid-range frequency, as we'll see. So we're going to be measuring the frequency response of these RC filters here. I've set it up right now, so channel one of the scope comes in here and here, measures across the entire circuit, so it's the voltage coming into this circuit. I've set that up right now to be a one kilohertz signal, five volts peak to peak, and you can see that here on the yellow. Channel two is set up to measure across the resistor, so it's in the high pass configuration. I've set the circuit up with a middle range frequency, a kilohertz, a reasonable voltage, so that all of my signals look reasonable here. We've also set up the measurement to measure, say, peak to peak for both channels. They're both measuring about 4.96, 4.32 volts there. The other thing we have to do in this lab, if we want to measure the frequency response, is not only measure the input voltage and the output voltage, but the phase difference between them. By looking at these here, I can essentially move these up. You can see there is a slight phase difference between them here. Let's open up the time a little bit so that we can see that a little better. We'll go there. And we're going to need to use our measurement cursors to figure that out. So I'm going to do measure, excuse me, not measurement, our, our cursors. We're going to do type time. We'll just say channel one. So we'll set the first cursor from the peak of the channel one. And we'll go to the closest peak of channel two. So that's slightly behind us there. And so we get the time difference between those two peaks there. 
So that's the measurement that we're going to do. Now we're going to sweep through frequencies from very low to very high frequencies. So do appropriate number of steps. We will basically go frequency. Let's go down to 100 hertz. Not quite sure where we are, so we'll do an auto set on us here. See the two signals, it didn't quite get them. Move the time a little bit. So there's the two signals there. The measurements 5.21 on the input, 980 millivolts on the output. So substantially smaller output. And you can see there's a larger phase shift here. So as we go down in frequency, we basically get to a smaller and smaller phase shift. We can also go up in frequency. So let's go to, we've got frequency, let's go 100 kilohertz, auto set, measure. Now they're both measuring just about 5 volts. They're very close to being in phase. We can go all the way up to our 3 megahertz here, auto set. And so we'll map out the ratio, the ratio of the input to the output, the output to the input voltage, and we'll measure the time difference for each one of these. Something else to watch, we didn't quite mention it here, but if we look at this, we have DC coupled both of these. That's probably what we want to do. There's no DC offset. We don't want to introduce complications at low frequencies, so we'll make sure that both of those are DC coupled. So that's essentially what we're going to do. Then when we want to measure the low pass configuration, we will need to reverse the resistor and capacitor. We've got this ground rule. We've got to keep all these ground wires connected together. So basically we will take this, this out. We'll put the capacitor from the ground connection onto the circuit. The resistor now goes from here to the power. We find channel 1, which is here, across the entire circuit again. And channel 2, looks like I got channel 2 accidentally there, didn't I? Okay, I want channel 2 across the capacitor, so let me do that. and channel 1 across the entire circuit. Make sure I've got that. Let me do an auto set to see what we can do it because it looks like we've lost channel 2. Why do we not have channel 2 there? There it is. It's actually very, very small is the thing. So there it is. Measure. Channel 1 is about 5 volts. Channel 2 is about 11 millivolts. Very, very small for high frequencies. We go down to 1 kilohertz. Set it up. Both of them look fairly normal. We go down to our 100 hertz. To adjust the time again. Measure. Let's set them both on the same scale. And they're both about 5 volts there. So again, we want to measure the ratio of the amplitudes to do our Bode plot. We use the cursors to measure the time difference to get the frequency, the phase shift between these. And we can measure both the high pass and low pass configuration of this. We'll then replace the capacitor with an inductor. We'll do an RL circuit. And then we will do an RLC circuit by putting the capacitor and the inductor in and do the same sort of frequency response measurements. Last part of the lab, as we noted, we're going to build two of these RC filters and run them into each other. So the input will be at the start of them, the output will be at the very end of it. Again, we'll do this set of measurements, the ratio of the voltages, and the phase difference as we sweep through everything. So this lab, we're measuring the frequency response of various filters high-pass and low-pass RC filters, RL filters, RLC filters, band-pass filters. Remember, frequency response means that we have to measure a Bode plot, which means we measure the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage as a function of frequency. 
we also need to measure the phase difference between the output and the input voltages. That requires you to use the measurement cursors on the scope as we showed here. Sweep through generally, lowest frequency maybe a few hertz, up to three megahertz if we can do it. You may hit noise, so very high or very low and not be able to make a measurement. Critical to keep all the grounds tied to the same point. Scope needs to be DC coupled unless otherwise noted. No offset voltage on the function generator.